In our previous video, we talked about the faulty 9950X that came about because it was paired with an X870E Steel Legend Wi-Fi from ASRock. And in that video, I asked you guys if you wanted me to test out all the different motherboard manufacturers with in particular a Ryzen 7 9800X3D and just check all the usual voltages that would happen on either idle or while we're gaming or while we're just doing light tasks like watching movies and listening to music as well as the last test that I'm going to throw in today's video and that is also running something like Cinebench for over 10 minutes with a kit of G-Skill 32GB 6000 CL28 timings memory and so here on the table we've got four different motherboards from MSI, ASUS as well as Aorus and ASRock. So these are their X870E motherboards and let's compare those voltages on all different states of the CPU and the SOC and things like that to see if there's any anomalies especially on the ASRock board versus the other three. And I'm also going to look at some settings in the BIOS and see if there's something we should have set off that's usually on by default. So let's get straight into the testing and see what these voltages present to us right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. So now we are coming back with the tests all finished a day and a half later because what I found here was actually really interesting, not just looking for an odd abnormality that would be only on the ASRock board, which we did actually find by the way, which we'll get onto a little bit later, but it was actually interesting to test all the different forms of utilizing the CPU and then seeing the voltages as well as the power consumption numbers in those given states with the out of the box settings just with the Expo profiles locked in on this G-Skill kit of memory and also on all the latest BIOSes on these boards. Now, I also did decide to test a B850 Steel Legend as well from ASRock, as well on top of that, the Ryzen 7 7700, just on the ASRock boards because there was an abnormal setting that all the other three board manufacturers did not exhibit. So these tests end up being not in vain and we did find something really interesting. But let's get off with the interesting thing about the ASRock boards from the get-go, and that is the more conservative settings. That is the lower voltages, as well as the lower power consumption that is incurred with a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D whilst we're gaming, for instance, or if we're just on idle desktop, or if we're in a Cinebench even, using a Max Cinebench R23 run, or if we are watching movies. So there was no huge differences here. The ASUS was a close second to the ASRock board, but then the MSI and the Gigabyte boards were going a little bit aggressive on that wattage and also the voltages too. Uh, another thing is too, I decided to monitor the EDC ampage. And so this is just the max ampage that's possible at that given point in time. And hardware monitor will note this. And I decided to include this after all the tests too, as well as the CPU voltage and Here's also the most interesting thing, the SOC voltage. So you notice there's a heap of graphs hitting your uh, screen right now. And that's because I wanted to show you guys the differences with all these boards out of the box, which is something I've actually kind of never done before is test all these different configurations and then compare just the single CPU across the four boards to check the behavior. But here's where we're gonna get onto the abnormality here. And this also, after I saw this, I decided to test the Ryzen 7000 on the ASRock board, and I noticed it was exhibiting the same behavior. And this was with the SOC voltage on these default settings, where the only thing we changed was those Expo profiles on all the tests here today. And here's where the SOC voltage essentially is exhibiting a dynamic behavior in that it changes on the ASRock boards. Both the ASRock B850 and the X870E they both change this SOC voltage within hardware monitor. We were noticing this as opposed to the three other boards, they were static across all the other tests that we did here, the four different tests we did here. 
And even when I was playing Fortnite for a couple of hours on all these boards, I noticed that the SOC voltage changed on only the ASRock board. And so what I believe is happening here and what's the case here, I'm gonna go and do a little bit of um, what I think is the issue here. And that is with this uh, SOC dynamic voltage, it can save you power, especially on idle or if you're doing light toss. But what I feel like what is happening here is the 7000 series, there was no problems there. That wasn't causing any malfunctions, but perhaps with the Ryzen 9000 series, there is a point where it's either via the BIOS code or some kind of a geezer update that AMD gives the board partners. There's some sort of request going on there that's just causing this very minuscule, might be uh, microseconds or milliseconds where it's just requesting so much voltage and that's just killing the, the CPU. And so that's what I believe is happening here because I have seen cases where people are reporting that it only works with one RAM stick after their CPU is just given out no display. So that would indicate that the SOC is incurred some kind of damage. Now, if the Ryzen 9000 series, perhaps AMD changed something in relation versus the 7000 series and perhaps once in a while, and it's extremely rare because when you look at say over a hundred cases, that's really actually minuscule still in the grand scheme of things versus how many CPUs AMD is actually selling and also how many people would still have those uh, platformed with an ASRock motherboard. So what I'm seeing here is perhaps there's an occasional faulty uh, draw here on the CPU and it's extremely rare. And then that's causing the CPU to draw too much C uh, voltage from the motherboard on the SOC, even though it thinks it's only getting say 1.12 volts or something like that. It's actually getting a much higher amount and that's causing the CPU to then drop out. Now, there is actually a cool solution. I did start testing this for a couple of hours here, uh, watching just YouTube movies and uh, videos and also gaming on Fortnite after I changed a particular setting in the BIOS on the ASRock boards and the SOC voltage then remains static or at least for the testing that I've done here. And this has to do with the, I'll show you on the screen here what exact setting it is, is the SOC OC mode. And by default, it's on auto. So that means ASRock may have just by auto uh, put this to disabled. And this is the funny thing, on Ryzen 7000 series, I personally found that on all the motherboard manufacturers, disabling this actually dropped your idle power consumption and it was beneficial to do so. But this time around with Ryzen 9000, perhaps there's this moment, as we just explained before, where you can get these occasional uh, faulty CPUs where that SOC voltage, there's something going on there and it's requesting too much and it's destroying the CPUs so in a rare select few cases. But also when we go into the BIOS and enable this on ASRock boards, it then takes away that dynamic voltage setting. And so the, uh, the voltage has just pretty much remained static here with like, I think, a few millivolt actually. And this was the case for also the gigabyte board. There was like a few millivolts in variance there. And uh, on the MSI and also the Zeus board, the Zeus board was just rock solid the whole time. Uh, the only board actually to just exhibit a constant SOC voltage that did not change throughout all the testing was actually the Zeus crosshair board. Uh, all the other boards did exhibit some small type of variance in the tests here. So that was interesting to see, but the also the Zeus board, you'll notice, it did just keep it at 1.25 volt as the other boards kept the SOC from the Expo profiles of 1.2 volts. So maybe Zeus has done some further testing there and decided to give it an extra 50 millivolt when it comes to a G-Skill 6000 CL28 kit of memory. Anyhow, all that aside, if you are on an ASRock board and you do have a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, at this point in time, I would recommend going into the BIOS and enabling the SOC OC mode and putting that to enable and then just saving an exit on top of your Expo profiles. I believe this could be the solution for now because that was the only difference I could really find that the other three boards did not exhibit. So the ASRock board was uh, changing the SOC voltage to essentially save power as we're seeing with those wattage results. But of course, I believe there's some sort of rare uh, either a bug or a fault on the CPU there, and that's causing the actual uh, CPU just to go clonkers and, and blow outs. And so after all this testing here today, that's where I'm gonna pinpoint the problem on what's happening with these Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. And in terms of, yeah, the fix for the meantime would just be to go in the BIOS, change that setting, and also I'm just gonna send ASRock an email 
and tell them perhaps they can release BIOS updates with this enabled by default. Maybe that is the issue. And so I'm actually waiting on feedback from the previous video I did where I sent them an email too. So hopefully they get on top of this. But with that said, if all this is indeed the issue, then it would actually point to the AMD CPUs being at fault rather than the ASRock motherboards. But again, this is very preliminary in my findings here. I don't have concrete proof that the ASRock uh, motherboard is at fault or the AMD CPU is at purely at fault here. So, but in the meantime, getting the ASRock board running exactly like the other four, it's simply a matter of changing one setting in the BIOS. Anyhow, with all that aside, I am gonna get that 9950X replaced and we are going to put that back in that previous PC where it died and I'm gonna enable this OC mode manually and crystallize that whole system state in that we're not gonna update the BIOS or anything like that. And we are just gonna change the CPU and change that one setting and then see if that keeps working for a long time because I feel like that will give us some answers that we need to know in relation to this whole matter. Though with all that aside, in terms of different features on the motherboards, it's kind of funny with the Zeus board. I do have to point out that they've by far got the best m.2 mounting system i've seen but then mounting the ram into the slots it's kind of like they got the worst system there it was just really weird to, to insert the ram sticks as opposed to the other three uh, board manufacturers but that was the most interesting thing that came out of the actual core features in comparison to the motherboards themselves as well as the azus board actually keeping that soc voltage just straight like a flat line across all the testing that we did here as opposed to the other three manufacturers. Anyhow guys, with all that testing aside, hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions or comments about today's testing, as well as if there's something I missed in today's video, be sure to drop in a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And with all that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.